got all these up ready. iPads out of battery, come on. Our new pin display packaging's arrived. Ta da! And Mike was actually packaging up a pin, so a pin display, so we might as well experiment and try these out. have ended up so big.
my goodness how cute just a new thank you card look i think these are getting better every time i design them this is the official collectible card number 11 so every quarter or sometimes a little bit more because these will actually only be in stock until that batch runs out and mike has actually been collecting them since they officially started. Mike actually mentioned that he finds them as fun as Pokemon cards because he collects Pokemon cards and so does Dean. I'm glad Mike is collecting these because I haven't been collecting my own cards but we have these in the studio so this is like the studio archive. So when we first started we haven't got any of the original ones. If anyone has got an original one please reach out and if you feel like you want to send them back like the really really old thank you cards and you want to send them back we will give you a little gift voucher and just just a little tip if you are a small business owner and um, make sure you keep all of them because I haven't got an archive of like my old designs like this anyway these are some of the original ones but these are actually postcards as well we used to send them out as thank you cards look at them so we've got a few postcards there so that was like what 2019 maybe beyond there and then this is when we started doing them more themed in 2021 as you can see I always do like the space theme in January and then we have you are very lovely <laughs> so cute for Valentine I believe in you for spring then we got put in the dog and his little sunflower and then we have a Christmas one then started doing the official collectible ones so these are the collectible ones the first four were square and now all the rest are all going to be a six kind of annoying that the official cards started square but we've got a be kind to your mind one that's card number one we then have a your beautiful one for autumn and this was in 2021 tis the season to be jolly oh look at this then and have faith in yourself then oh my god we kind of skipped spring here in 2022 we just like kept this card for ages it was a rough year in business though so we probably ordered all these in and didn't sell much that year then gingy and spice and then 2023 we had the space theme again with bumblebutt and marshy and then we have the sakura one and then this started in august and then we have bumblebutt and then we have the new one Ta-da! This is my favourite one so far. Then I always do my desk to match my theme and pop it on here. So my desk is all that. Oh, doesn't really. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I'll put it like that. So my desk. Hey, come on. Or maybe I'll just pinch it on the top. There we go. My desk is all like purple themed. Anyway, I have been working on some functional stickers and I have decided that I'm going to do kind of a mini launch before our big collection launch. It's not going to be a themed launch, but it's to add to our existing stickers and stationery in store. I want to, before Valentine's Day, one, create new greeting cards, but perhaps bring the print in inside catnip again. So I actually experimented with a greeting card on our art print paper and the quality is so so nice and actually in fact when we used to hand print our greeting cards before they used to sell better than the ones that we bought in and it also means we can do lower quantity because if I'm being honest greeting cards don't sell that great but it might be because our designs aren't great and we haven't got many in stock whereas if we print them back in house one it's faster and I can turn them around quicker and two we have better quality control but the only thing is we currently get them laminated with this soft velvet lamination and they wouldn't have that lamination on but i still think they look really really nice because the print quality is actually better so i'm thinking of doing that first and foremost and adding some valentine's products i actually created a notes and um, folder in my phone cute valentine's puns on and number two i'm also going to be working on functional planner stickers so i've already done illustrations for some of them i've been collecting functional sticker ideas from you guys for the past two years and i think my problem is is i focus on collection themes and building them up rather than adding to my stationary range well in 2024 there's a few things i'd like to improve like like making sure we restock sold out stationery like our notepads and slowly adding more functional stickers like doctor's appointments etc in our store. I decided in this small unthemed stationery launch that I would like to do doctor's appointments, general appointments, vet stickers which I actually illustrated Daisy and Fluffy my cat and dog in, email stickers, work from home stickers and post to social media stickers which we actually used to have back in 2018. I 
and I'm gonna put them into Photoshop and send them off and I made like a tick and basically me and Mike and Dean had our yearly meeting yesterday and we were talking about our future goals for catnip and where we want to go and I also want to eventually do digital stickers but that is something that we're going to be probably doing over time it's going to take us a while to get to that point because we have hundreds of different stickers that we're going to convert but I found these so speaking of archives I have old stickers that I've kept at catnip and these used to be one of the best sellers in our in our shop it's like emojis for like art so we've got copying markers and pencils and i thought i might actually add this to this sticker collection i don't know if i actually showed you this but this is what my cute little desk setup looks like look i've got the pastel witch mouse mat because we haven't done the marshy mouse mat yet but it still looks really pretty and it still all blends i've got my new thank you card Look how pretty it looks, all purple. I've got my little light on like a purpley white setting. makes me a little bit sad that I'm not using my sketchbook and pens anymore and I think I'm going to carve out the time to use them while I plan my 2024 spring collection this year. However, like I say, it does add a lot more time because usually what I do is I take a photo of my sketches and the drawings that I've made, then I put it into my iPad anyway and begin making them digital. So it is an added step. And if I'm being honest, I've always been more drawn to digital art than traditional, but you can't replace the feeling of pens on paper. I've always been jealous of artists who are fantastic at traditional media. I think it looks so, so beautiful. But since the age of around about 11, I've always been drawn to digital illustration. I actually started my journey into digital art by creating pixel art on MS Paint. I even used to have a pixel doll art site and even coded my very own HTML website at the time, which became one of the top 10 pixel doll websites on Dolls Palace, which was like this website where it had a bunch of different pixel doll websites and had like a list of top 10. I used to be buzzing about that. I was like addicted to it. After school, I used to go back and work on my pixel doll site. I wonder if anyone here has actually been on my site i think it was called like doll's garden at the time i wish i could find it in the archives because i was a child i couldn't actually get a domain or anything but i actually got hosted by one of the bigger websites so i had something like doll's garden dot something dot com but i can't for the life of me remember i even created a doll builder where i designed clothes you could drag and drop onto the dolls and this was between the ages of around 11 and 13 so i think i've always just enjoyed the digital space and loved being part of like the digital revolution as it was taking shape back in the 90s and early noughties. time to turn my illustrations into sticker sheets I decided for a lot of the stickers rather than just having the image to add a little ticky box I personally find ticking things off extremely satisfying and serotonin boosting so rather than just having the sticker to remind me I thought that this would be a nice added touch to add to the planner I also like adding different colors so I created subtle color differences I always set up my files on Photoshop first and then I put them into Illustrator I'm not sure if this is actually the best way of doing things it's just the flow that I've ended up finding 
that worked for me. And then I add a separate layer for the cut lines before I send them off to my manufacturer. Here's some examples of what I sent off. I ended up turning these work from home stickers into study sticker sheets too. I also used to have study stickers in stock, but we have been out of stock of these for a while. We also have email stickers and to use the most of the space around the page, I decided to add little letter emojis without the ticky box so you could get more stickers per sheet. We're all about getting the most out of our stickers. You'll often see me fill in as much blank space as I can with my stickers and since we're scheduling and creating content earlier in the day I also made sticker sheets based off this too which I personally will find handy in fact all these stickers are mainly for me and what I will find handy and in my planner throughout the years of planning but hopefully you guys will like them too and I also sent off for a bunch more stickers like doctors birthdays and vet ones in the post from Amazon I got these little kiddie pencil grips I know this sounds so silly seeing as though I am like 32 uh, but basically in my planner I have been using this pen whoops it just fell off I've been using this pen that I got from Japan which is really really nice by uh, uni and it's called the emo and I really love how it writes but as you can see it is so so skinny and I've got like normally I've actually had my nails all cut down but normally I have really long nails and it's hard to write because of how skinny it is and that's why I haven't used it but these just from Amazon just to add to it which will hopefully uh, make it easier to write on let's do a little experiment I'm procrastinating from doing my stickers but Ooh, which one should I use I feel like I'll use this pink one here but you get a few different grips you get this little squishy one I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to see it or I'll, I'll put it in a pinned comment if you're interested in these but oh you get a little glittery oh I feel like the glittery one's nice or maybe this one oh that's way better what the heck why didn't I get these sooner I've had these pens since June and I really wanted to use them for my planner so if you have like a thin pen like this or pencil and you like chunkier pens to write with these are great Pen test, yay. These are the type of pens though, that like, you know where, if you do it at like an angle, they'll wear at that angle. That kind of remind me of the pens you used to get at school. Is it the barrel? Now this won't go back on. I think this one might be a bit too thick actually. I might have to change it out. I'll leave a little pinned comment if you guys want to check these out because these will probably come in handy. So sometimes it's hard using really skinny pens. I'll see you in the next week when we will finally be getting to work on experimenting with the greeting card printing. If you like this video, you may love these ones. Alright then, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> I love you. Goodbye!